My name is Adam Myers. I'm going to be showing y'all how to grill up some more items on your Hasty Bake Charcoal Grill. Uh, the things I have here for you today are some of the most popular things to cook on the Hasty Bake. Uh, I'm not trying to tell you how to do what you do best, but just trying to give you an idea of where to go uh, if you haven't ever cooked these things before. Uh, I have corn on the cob, uh, which is a favorite for the grill. Uh, I also have bratwurst. Uh, this is not a pre-cooked, but actually a raw bratwurst that I'm going to be cooking for you. There are hot links, which are a spicy, very finely ground sausage, the texture of a hot dog, but very, very spicy. Then the other thing is going to be an Eckert smoked sausage. Uh, this is actually a very, very good sausage to cook, uh, has great flavor. Uh, first of all, we're going to start with the corn. Uh, a lot of folks do a lot of different things with corn on the cob. Uh, some folks will peel all the husk back and peel the silk off, rub it down with butter, salt and pepper, and grill it that way. Some folks will do the same thing uh, and then cover it in foil and then grill it in foil. Uh, some folks will pull the husk back, pull the silk off, rub it down with butter and salt and pepper and then put the husk back on. There are all kinds of different ways to cook corn and I recommend that you do it in the way that you like it best. Uh, but the founder of Hasty Bake actually relayed this little bit of information to me and I've tested it out in multiple cooking classes and got lots of different opinions. I'd be interested to hear yours if you actually try it on grilling up corn. What he said is that the silk that's around the corn itself, if you leave it on along with the husk and grill it all together, the silk actually gives it a richer, deeper, cornier flavor. I wasn't sure about that, so I tried it for myself and it actually does. Now there is no butter or salt added to it. I think the corny flavor is enough to override any salt or butter, which you can always add later. So the way I'm going to show you how to do corn on the cob is actually just in the husk here. So I'm going to do is open up the Hasty Bake and throw the corn on. I'm also going to cook the bratwurst. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get those guys started along with the corn. Oh my gosh, what is that? I'm actually baking along with these other items uh, some cookies and some crescent rolls. Uh, just showing that the Hasty Bake can function both as a grill and as an oven. So I'm going to cook uh, these items right over my fire, which is right here on this side. The cookies and the crescent rolls are experiencing the convection heat from the hot charcoal. They're not seeing the direct heat from the coal. So I'm going to go ahead and put the corn on here. I'm going to put the bratwurst over off to the side. Now bratwurst is a very coarse ground sausage. So there are big pieces of meat and fat in it. The worst thing you can do to something like a bratwurst is to pierce the outside casing and have it begin to ooze out all of its juicy bratwurst goodness. So I prefer to cook them kind of off to the side, not really directly over the fire. I want that corn to end up in my cookie. So that guy there. My firebox is set down pretty low. I'm going to go ahead and raise it up to just above the mid-level. Now what I'm trying to do to the corn is to get the husk to begin to really cook. Uh, I want it to be kind of black and kind of seared on the outside and then I'll move it to indirect heat and be able to finish it off that way. I've opened the vents up on the exhaust of the Hasty Bake. I'm also going to open up the intake vents so they get the maximum amount of airflow through there. Right now the temperature is running at 250 or after I opened the lid, so it was probably running about 275 or 300 degrees before I do that. Remember, every time you open the lid, you lose all of your heat and smoke. Uh, so you want to keep the lid closed unless you're going to be turning the food or unless you're checking an internal temperature. The hot links I'll do just by themselves. Once the bratwurst and the corn get seared up, I'll put the hot links on and grill those. Uh, they're a very good sausage, all kinds of regional varieties, a very tasty treat. Now for the Eckert smoked sausage, what I like to do with it, because it is such a thick sausage, um, if, you're a, if you're a big guy, uh, you can eat a whole Eckert smoked sausage uh, at one time, knock yourself out. But what I prefer to do is to butterfly them. Take a sharp knife and to split it lengthwise. 
not pushing all the way down to cut it all the way through, only about three quarters of the way through. And then I'll actually open it up. Makes it a little bit easier for serving because you can serve the actual half a sausage instead of the whole thing. I also have a little trick that I like to do with the sausage as well. Now, this sausage comes in many different forms. There are many different smoked sausages out there, finer or coarser ground. Uh, this is just the one that I actually prefer to use. Uh, what I'll do with this sausage is I'll actually take it and grill it over the direct heat to give it some nice black sear marks. And then I'll put a little bit of my hasty bake rub and a little bit of barbecue sauce on it. To get As you can see, it's starting to really begin to blacken the husk up on the outside of the corn. It's not uncommon for some of it to actually catch fire and actually begin to burn a little bit, but it's insulated uh, by, by the silk, so you don't really have to worry about the corn itself actually getting burned. It's usually just the husk on the outside. Take a look at our bratwurst too and see how they're doing. Got some nice light grill marks on them. They're starting to actually begin to, to cook a little bit. And once again, what we don't want us to do is rupture that bratwurst and lose all that tasty goodness. I typically try to leave a little gap in between my sausage or uh, whatever casing food I'm cooking so that the meat can get uh, the heat from all the way around. And our crescent rolls, our cookies are cooking right up. All right. Now our items have had a little while to cook on the Hasty Bake. Let's check in and see how things are going. Cookies are cooking. Our corn looks plenty browned all the way around. So I'm gonna take the corn and stack it over here on this side. My bratwurst are looking wonderful. I'm gonna swap the ones that were closer to the fire with the ones that were further away. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put on our hot links right over the top of the direct fire. Not for very long, it's gonna close the lid, let those guys color up right quick. Usually doesn't take very long in order to cook uh, pre-cooked sausage because all you're trying to do is warm it back up. If you, th if you ever have any doubt as to whether or not a sausage is pre-cooked or not cooked, you can always read the label. It will say that it is a raw product. It will say that this product has been fully cooked and usually have some information as to how to reheat or how to be able to serve it. Uh, for most hot dogs and most of your cooked sausage products, uh, it'll just need to be rewarmed. Uh, for raw products, you want to make sure uh, that you cook them thoroughly. Most of the time for a casing sausage, like the bratwurst, uh, it's typically done um, whenever it begins to, to expel the juices from it. That means that all of the fat and everything inside it is being rendered down and cooked out. And usually you begin to get a wrinkly texture on the outside. So while it's cooking, usually it will plump up as much as possible and then it will begin to lose some of that moisture and begin to get slightly wrinkly, which is why you really don't want to rupture uh, the casing until the sausage is just about done. If you rupture it a bit early, it might prematurely tell you that it's done when it's actually not.